I had a rather queer feeling watching the first episode of It's a Sin. In fact, from the very first moment. It starts on the Isle of Wight. A young boy is going to London to study acting. His mother offers, in fact she says, she's going to clean his room while he's away. Panic! Horror! He cleans his room. Why? Because he's got a stash of gay pornographic magazines. In fact, him magazine, which was available in Britain during the 1970s and part of the 1980s. My question was, how did this very young man get hold of him magazine on the Isle of Wight? Because, as far as I know, it was not sold in regular news agents. If they'd come through the post in plain brown wrapper, surely the mother or the father would have wanted to know what they were and why weren't they on display in the boy's room? Why were they hidden away? So that was the first thing. Then we come to scene number five. It's a very funny scene. I enjoyed it enormously. It involves a Nigerian family. It's the family of Roscoe. The mother of Roscoe is holding up a copy of a newspaper. This newspaper, which is clearly called Gay News, so you can't actually see much more about it. And she is exorcising Roscoe from this terrible pit of sodomy, i.e. gay news, into which he's obviously fallen. I thought this was very amusing. However, I noticed, and I'm probably the only one in the whole of the audience for It's a Sin that noticed, that this was not relevant to the time in which this scene was set, which very specifically is September 1981. This issue is July 1978. So how come she is holding up a copy of a four-year-old newspaper when it's supposed to be 1981? And I thought, well, perhaps it looks more like a newspaper than the real newspaper from that period, because that looks perhaps more like a magazine. So maybe they did it for dramatic purposes. However, when I picked up this copy, which is November 1981, I noticed on the banner, Gay Cancer, page 21. And voila, Gay Cancer, a whole page, what is it, how to recognise it, etc, etc. Now wouldn't it have been rather good if they maybe had this issue, which was November rather than September, and the mother had thrown it away and we had seen as it opened Gay Cancer question mark. That, that would have been quite interesting, but no, they used this issue, which was July 1978. Later on in that episode, we go to uh, a gay pub and we see a pile of what look like newsletters dumped on the bar. And this is supposedly the only information that gay people in Britain during the early 1980s, which was when AIDS was not named AIDS, we didn't know it was a gay cancer. Um, I'd never seen anything like this before. Now what I thought was, not only was Gay News publishing fairly regular information about this disease, but there was also another newspaper out there. It was a free newspaper and it was called Capital Gay, edited by former news editor of Gay News, the late and much missed Michael Mason, and Gay News' Graham McCarrow. This was a free weekly newspaper. It had a regular column on gay cancer, aka AIDS, aka HIV AIDS, from 1982 until 1995 when it closed. It was always updating when it had the information, medical information, also the information about carers and how you could actually cope with the trauma of this terrifying disease which attacked the immune system. So my question is, why no capital gay in the entire series, which is five episodes long? You could say, well, is that really important? Yes, it is, and I'll tell you why. Because one of the characters says to another of the characters, when you go to New York, can you pick up some information? Because we haven't got any information. 
He goes to New York and he brings back a pile of newspapers and magazines. Now this gives the impression, doesn't it, that the British gay community and its press did nothing substantial about informing the public. Capital Gay was mainly circulating in London, but it also went out to Brighton and a few other cities as well. However, there were other magazines, like Him magazine, which did cover HIV AIDS. My only explanation, and I can't really think of one, is that It's a Sin's makers were maybe playing to the American audience. And maybe it's good for Americans to feel that only they had the up-to-date information and maybe the Brits were far behind in this, but it's not true because the British gay press was in touch with the American gay press, the Canadian gay press, the French gay press, the German gay press, the Australian gay press. It's as though we were some little village, almost like an Isle of Wight on its own, that had absolutely no sophistication whatsoever. Gay News had been published since 1972, him since the late 70s, and there were other papers and other publications which followed. Gay News was responsible for the setting up of Gay Switchboard, which is featured in It's a Sin. It was also partly, I think, responsible for creating what we call the gay community, but it's in fact gay communities, plural. Gay News was the oak tree in the forest, around which other trees grew, including Capital Gay, because as I said, the two editors had actually worked for Gay News. So my question is, why? My question is, why in a program which purports to be so real and to have researched the background of the early 80s, is there this huge gap, this erasure of the gay press? Now, I wonder if that series had been about Jewish community in the 1970s, 1980s, or the Jamaican community in that period, whether their newspapers would have been treated in such a cavalier manner. The Jewish Chronicle, the Jamaican Daily Gleaner, for example, whether someone would have held up a four-year-old copy of that while purporting to be talking in 1981. I also wonder why they had a mock-up of a newspaper at the end of... Uh, episode two, I think it was, called The London Gay. As far as I know, there was no London Gay. It was Capital Gay. How do I know it was Capital Gay? Because I used to pick up copies, but more than that, because I did, I think, the first interview with the lover of a man who had died of AIDS and his body had been sent back to his home country, which was Canada, in a body bag. I was there. I wrote the article for a newspaper which was entirely ignored, obliterated, erased from It's a Sin. And I feel it's a sin. So is this just my pet peeve? No, it isn't. I am quietly outraged on behalf not only of people like Graham McCarra and the late Michael Mason who worked so hard to create Capital Gay, but also on behalf of the gay press generally, not just in England, but all over the world. They worked to create a communications network in a world, a mainstream world, that was either absolutely indifferent to the suffering we were going through, or openly hostile and almost jubilant that God's wrath had finally struck. So I'm just saying, Where were those gay newspapers? And where was the honour given to them and to the people that worked for them? I was disappointed, dismayed, and feeling really that this is the sort of attitude that was shown to gay people all along during the 70s and 80s. And as my former colleague from Gay News, Alison Hennigan, put it, gays must never be seen to be successful and gay love must never be seen to work and of course when you pull the rug from a community by saying actually they were just really walking around in a fog of no information at all you're really saying ah they're really not that important really they basically asked for it because they didn't even have a good newspaper to give them the information well
They did. And I think it's about time that the gay press, in the next mini-series about gay life in Britain, and there will be others because it's a sin and pride have shown that there is a public beyond the gay world for gay history in Britain. I hope that next time they'll take a bit more care because it is important. We were there, we did speak, there was a pulse and there was an energy and it permeated to a community that was disparate, diverse and alone in that situation where suddenly a tsunami, a mysterious disease that no one could name was targeting us. So one of the things that we had was the truth, as far as we could ascertain at the time, embodied in the printed word. And the word was gay news. We did have a number of gay newspapers.